Hi everyone, it's Lee from Island Biologicals. Today I'm here with David Hardwick, agroecologist. David, today I really want to just unravel what are these biostimulants that people are waving their arms about? What are they doing? What are we yeah. up to? Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a growing topic, isn't it? Because there's lots more of these types of products out in the marketplace. And I guess everyone's asking, well, what is it? What does it do? And you not only have the chance to spend your money on the normal things like fertilizers and soil amendments, but now you've got all these new types of products to possibly spend your money on. So why don't we jump in and explore, just demystify the different types of soil products that are out there and, and what exactly biostimulants are and what they do. And you mentioned fertilizer in there. Yes. Let's clear that up right from the beginning. They are not fertilizers. Fantastic. No, That's no, easy. Well, Let's we've done on. that. Okay. Uh, so some of these products contain minerals. Yes. However, that's not the purpose is it that's not what we're trying to do no so well let's break it down and have a look at a plant and a soil and just go through kind of why we actually chuck stuff out, out or apply things to the soil and to plants and yep. then just then from there we can break down the types of products that are out in the marketplace so i guess in con you know in our traditional conventional approach to agronomy of growing plants and managing soils there's two main products that most people are familiar with and that is fertilizers adding nutrients sure. to get plants to grow yep. and the second one is soil amendments to try and improve soil constraints and limes one that most people okay. know adding lime to your soil to fix yep. your ph yep. so they're kind of like the tr two traditional types of products that are in the marketplace fertilizers and soil amendments and I guess in the 21st century, we know that there's more to the soil plant system than that, and that the biological world's really important. Yep. So the other two types of categories that are actually out there now are what we call biostimulants and inoculants, or sometimes called biologicals. Sure. Yeah. So Dave, can we just go into to some of the, the things we might use on soil in a bit more depth and discuss what it is they're up to? Yeah, sure. So if we think first of all of fertilisers, because most of us are familiar with fertilisers and what they do, the, the definition of a fertiliser really is something that adds nutrients to your soil or your plant. So yep. it's adding fertility. Yes. And it's actually a legal definition in Australia. So yes. you can't call something a fertiliser unless it has a reasonable level of nutrients in it. Yep. And really when we think of fertilisers, the most common type of fertilizer is the soluble fertilizer so urea yep. map superphosphate where the nutrients are in a highly soluble form yeah yep. they're what we call inorganic yep. and that's the one that most people are mostly familiar with farmers and graziers the next type of fertilizer are the mineral fertilizers or slow release type of fertilizers sure. like rock phosphate yeah, sure. or potash and then the third category are your fertilizers where the nutrients attach with carbon and that's what I call a biofertilizer. Right. So when you put your nitrogen with a bit of carbon, it's a bit more uh, suitable for the biology in your soil yep, yep. and it's more stable. So because you've attached carbon so to it. So you're not going to lose your nitrogen so that's quickly right. to yeah. leaching or volatilization Correct. because it's, it's loosely bound. bound. Stable yet available yep. is the term that yep, you like, sure. uh, like to use. So yes, exactly. And so nutrients bound to carbon uh, when you're using those type of products, we'd call them a biofertilizer. Right. Yeah. So three types of fertilizers. Um, and then the second type of product or input that people are really familiar with is something like compost or lime um, or gypsum. And, and these are often products we use to modify a chemical or physical constraint in our soil. So if we've got poor structure, or poor pH or acidity yeah. in the soil, then we might use gypsum or lime. So most people are familiar with soil amendments or ameliorants, sure. and they're the three sort of common ones out there. So we, you know, we might use a compost to almost top dress and, and get some more structure into it and, and that kind yeah. of thing as well. Adds a bit of organic yeah. matter and gypsum kind of plays the same role. People use gypsum to help improve structure okay. and obviously lime or dolomites yep. used by some people to manage pH. Yep. But all of those type of products, which most people are familiar with, they're called soil amendments and often you use them at quite high rates. They're sure. quite an expensive investment yep. and yep. you're kind of getting that benefit for a few years. But yes, they're not something you'd try and do every year necessarily. That's right. The kind yeah. of thing you'd yep. do every five or depending on your situation, obviously. Correct. Yeah. So Dave, we've covered fertilizers we've covered amendments yep then we get to the really exciting category yep so we've got your biostimulants which yes. also has subcategories within it yeah. can we can we just go through well what are the subcategories and what are the different things we're aiming at doing in the soil 
Yeah, well, if you think about, again, coming back to agronomy, what we're trying to do is either add more fertility to help the plant grow better, so adding more nutrients, basically. Or the, but the second thing we're often trying to do in agronomy is improve the cycling of what we already have. Yes. So we're, we're trying to improve the soil conditions so plants can take up their nutrients that are already there more efficiently. Right, so, so yeah. we're aiding mineral the, the cycling and, yes. and movement of nutrients through the topsoil so plants can get them so that that might be something that's done in conjunction with a fertilizer to increase the effectiveness well there's no point putting out fertilizers if they're not cycling if, if well they're not going, they're not well. going to be no. used so yeah. you know and that's often people will try and fix the problem by adding more fertility when yeah. actually their soil might be poor structured or have no root growth this, the nutrients they add aren't cycling anyway, right. so they're not really addressing the cause of the problem at that point. Right. So really a nutrient management in soils is about not just having enough fertility, but it's also about have, making sure it's cycling. Having really enough well. function going Correct. on in the soil to, yeah, to yeah. utilise it. So that leads us to the other two types of products that are obviously becoming more and more widespread in the marketplace, and that is um, inoculants, biological inoculants yeah. and biostimulants. So if we pick on them, yeah, Great. we can have a look at them. So David, can we unravel that a bit and just go into those categories about what they're doing? So yeah, sure. No, well, let's start with um, biological inoculants. So a Great biological idea. inoculant, something like this product here, Biocast, which happens to be the same we, logo as on your shirt. Yeah. So I know what, the people. You're right. You better just tell us what exactly that is. Uh, so th this is a liquefied worm cast, and the aim of this one for us is to extract many as many microbes from solid worm cast yep. and suspend them into a liquid. Okay, so that's an example for us of a biological product where what we're aiming to do is actually apply to our soil uh, living bacteria in this case, or and or fungi. So we're actually inoculating the soil of living things. Increase the, the, the numbers and the diversity, definitely. Yep. Um, there's an effect of what happens to what's in here already in a relationship with this, yep. as well as what you, you feel you're adding to that. Yep. Another example of a biological inoculant would be rhizobia. So yes. when you, you grow your legumes, yep. you're inoculating the seed, you're putting a living thing yep. with it. Uh, and compost tea would be another one yep. where you're trying to culture up a big brew yep. of different bacteria and or fungi and or protozoa, depending on your mix, mm. and add that to a top Send soil. them on their way. So yes. might we include VAM inoculates, mycorrhizal, yep. mycorrhizal inoculates? inoculates um, yep. Uh, dung beetles, okay. adding earthworms, right. you're adding a right. living thing to your soil, okay. so let's call that an inoculant. Yeah, the, the worms yeah. don't go through the sprayer as well, but they also, uh, they're, they're still a good thing to have. Yeah. Um, so th this is more than one effect, but the joy in that for me is how much is alive, and that's been cultured by the worm right. in and a composting so situation. So I guess no matter what the biological product is, and worm, uh, the worm extract product is an example of it, is what we're trying to do, we're not necessarily adding nutrients. No. So, so there's no point really going, what's the NPK no. in that product? Funny you should mention it. Yeah. But yep. That's not really the no, goal. Our no. goal is actually to try and improve the biological community yes. there so that it cycles nutrients better and it yep. provides a more optimum environment for your plant. Absolutely. Nodes. We're trying to enliven that as much as we possibly can, yep. have that functioning for itself. Yep. And funnily enough, as a biostimulants manufacturer, when you stop calling me because everything's working, yep. I feel like we've, we've right. had a success. Dreadful business model. And I guess the key, the key is, Lee, you can come and work with me, mate. The key <laughs> is that what we now know sort of in 21st century agronomy is that the plant and the soil community are in this two-way intimate relationship. Yes. But probably we didn't have that understanding or as un a good as understanding of that in the 20th century. Yeah. We just thought it was nutrients in, plants take them off. But it's a two-way deal. Absolutely. And so with the biological products, we're trying to recreate that complex symbiotic community yes. that the plant lives with. Uh, absolutely. and But also as we go further into our understanding it, we understand that it's not not just the soil that contains the microbe, the plant also has microbes within it. That's right. um, the, the cycle and the symbiosis is that complete that the plant is consuming live organisms. It's getting really messy as we get into 21st it's getting, century. It's fantastic. Economy. You couldn't yeah. make that stuff yeah. up in yeah. a sci-fi. Yeah. It is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So there's such a complete symbiosis. That's right. It's a living system.
system and, and the modern view on soils is it's complex sis adaptive systems yes. um, and complex means really, really complex. But the basics are that we need to sort of encourage and maintain a biological community yes. around the roots yep. and the biologicals are one way to try and supplement that process yes. in farming. Uh, yes. so that's really what uh, biological products Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And another uh, thing that you, we mentioned is the rhizobium or the VAM inoculus, where we also use that as a seed inoculate. Uh, and interesting, the results that come off that in that early establishment. Yep. So yep. the future of that has got a lot of work to be done, yep. a lot of interesting stuff. And, um, right. But get, definitely exciting results. Oh, huge. I, I get that yep. excited every time someone sends me a dreadlocks photo. I'm pumped. Yep. Yep. So we've covered biological inoculates, very important group, but we've got other stuff going on in there as well with the biostimulants category. So Dave, stimulants. Yep. What are they doing? Yeah, well, stimulants are probably the, the more mysterious of the product types that are out there in the marketplace, Lee. So there's a whole range of them, and it's really an exciting emerging area of science, what we call plant stimulants. Um, let's have a look at some examples. So one that's been well known, and we're not meaning to promote any, any uh, brands by um, default, but we've got one from, from Earthcare, which is a Humate product. Yep. So Humates are uh, often a brown coal manufactured yep. material. But they're creating a type of uh, stimulatory product, humates, humic acids or fulvic acids. Yep. And they're, what they're, they're seen to do when they go in the soil is just, again, stimulate biological activity. So you're not adding microbes. It doesn't have a microbe no. in it. But the compounds in them trigger or improve the physiology of either plants or they stimulate the microbes that are already there. Well, so for your humic products, is there a range of microbes that we're specifically aiming at stimulating there? The different types of products are seen to focus on either fungi or bacteria yeah. type targeting, but in general, you know, and molasses is another one. So molasses is there, in, in a way you could say that's a food source for yes. the microbes yeah. in your soil, the bacteria in yeah. the soil. And so you can think of stimulants, not just as a food source, but it just, they kind of like stimulate uh, positive growth, but they're not nutrient based, no. so we can't call these fertilizers no. at all. And some of these compounds are sometimes known as growth promotants, plant growth promotants. Right. Sometimes they're called enzymes, organic acids, yep. or the common name we use is biostimulants. Yep. And uh, the key thing about them is that they stim they seem to either often they either stimulate the roots to grow more and to give out more sugars. Yes. Other times they stimulate the plant physiology so you get better plant health yes. or plant disease resistance. Yep. And sometimes they seem to trigger the microbial community to kind of multiply and it catalyzes the uh, microbial community. So they kind of work in different ways and sometimes you're not sure which way they're working. Well, presumably with. if we've enhanced the function and growth of the plant, yes. we're also enhancing the microbiology because we've got greater root activity and photosynthesis and yeah. just overall greater function going on yes. in there. Yeah. So, the, as you say, confusing, there's not an effect necessarily. There's, there's one plus one equals 25. There's all these interactions going on between them. That's right. It's not as black and white as, say, when you put out a nutrient that's limiting and you see that response yeah. from growth. But yeah. it's a qualitative change. And yeah. so you might see a qualitative... A lot of the biostimulants are shown to have plant health effects. And the key thing with plants growing, crops growing in this, you know, in a hot seasonal conditions is stress. Yes, abiotic so, stresses. Yep, yes. and so just helping minimise the stress on plants, some of these products are showing. Does, interestingly, plants. that is when people ask what they will see, I will tell them greater plant health. Yep. So I don't want grass this high tomorrow, I don't yep. care. I want that plant to function better as a plant, stronger, uh, particularly when things turn a little less than favourable. Yep. So and it's I, those key stress events in the in the crop cycle that actually often make it economic or not. Yes. So if you've got an avocado orchard and it's, there's a heat stress event with young yep. fruit on and yep. all the fruit drop, yeah, well, you've yeah. lost a lot of potential yeah. yield for the year. Unfortunately, yeah. it doesn't help with hail. It doesn't help with hail, yeah. And it doesn't but, help with the price at the wholesale markets no, either. True. So but true. Every, every, everything's got a limit. That's right. But it's again, it's part of that cost benefit yep. of that agronomy. We've got a couple of other examples of products that you've got here there's yep. some hydrolysates which yep. are ferment high protein material that's fermented yep. they usually have a bit of a sweet sour smell to them yep. so we've got, we got an egg we've egg. got a fish yep. we've got a um, chicken egg further con concoction and all of these guys have been through a fermentation process yep. so the process of fermentation actually creates the microbes in the ferment create a whole range of what we call stimulatory compounds yep. organic acids yep. enzymes 
and there's been quite a lot of research showing that those organic acids and enzymes, the stimulatory compounds in them, uh, have effect on plant health and, and right. stress events. Yeah, right. there's quite a lot of exciting research around the world. Yeah. The question is how to apply them sort of in my situation. Where do they fit the yes, system? Correct. So back to these ferments, um, some of these are made from a waste product as well, a waste protein. So yeah. that one is a, is a tuna product that is made from the frames and heads and so on and yeah. um, this one was was made from mortalities on a chicken farm and that was made from uh, waste eggs yes so the, there's the potential that we some of the things we consider waste now yeah. actually have very good value as um, really i think the waste the word waste should be exactly, wasted exactly, from the dictionary exactly, when exactly. it comes to agriculture underutilized resource yeah biomass it's it's right. biomass that can be transformed into a positive yes. uh, fertility input yep. um, not necessarily a fertilizer although some of these products if they've got a high concentration of protein in them yes. they're actually nitrogen fertilizers as well right. as a stimulant and you know some of the fish type products yes. come into that category that is something i want to ask you the, this contains rel relatively good nitrogen and phosphorus yeah. um, being a fish and would assumably uh, contain a lot of trace minerals because it's from the sea, yeah. as would your seaweed stimulant there. Yeah. We're still not putting them in the category of fertiliser though. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess it's it's where you enter that grey area of how much trace elements are in there, and and do you could it be marketed as a trace element product? And so so applying that just for its mineral content yep. is missing quite a lot of the point of what's going on there. Correct, and if I've got a, if I've got a nutrient limitation for my production goal, then I have to somehow I either have to add more nutrients mm. in the form of fertilizer, yep. or I have to get whatever's there cycling mm. better. And, and, yeah. and often people will go, I've got a deficiency of zinc or copper or whatever, and it may be that you actually have zinc and copper there, but it's just not cycling it's and becoming available. Yeah. yeah. So in that case, trying to trigger the improvement of the cycling with either biologicals or even Ma how you manage things yep. uh, will increase the availability of what's there and, and these categories sometimes come in as something to help you do that. Yeah, so if, if we then go and try and add that mineral that, that is not cycling, yep. potentially we're just adding another mineral to not cycle. Yes. If yeah. it's not cycling, there's a reason for it and that's a function we want to improve. Right. Yep. yep, yep, exactly. So David, thanks for unravelling some of the complexities of, of the biostimulant world today and I hope this has ironed out some of the confusion yeah well there's definitely yeah there is a bit of confusion around there and i guess if you just think about them there's those four different product types and look some of them are newer products in the marketplace and we're still learning about how plants and soils all interact and microbiology but it's an exciting time for agronomy and some of these products like the worm-based products are, are really showing that they're part of the future i think well, i think it's great that that we're able to work these into a good well-managed system mm. um, and not see them as a thing that might fix all our, our woes but yeah. You utilise them as a valuable tool as, yep. as part of the management of plant and soil together. Yep, and just maintaining that, de-stressing the plant and maintaining an optimum environment for it, I think they're really a key tool in the toolbox. Absolutely. Yep. I think I think as we see more uh, seasonal variations that we don't really want to see, mm. I think that, that care for the soil is only going to improve, that, yep. that focus on having that function better in a bad year rather than just in a, an average rainfall year. Yes, yep. Everyone can go well in a good year. It's easy, yeah, great.